All right, hello, let's talk about this vending machine that we have here uh, with control, all right? Uh, before I get into it too much, let's go ahead and show how this works. So we have uh, nickel, dime, quarter inputs here, all right? And then we have a set price. I'm gonna go ahead, set it to eight. Uh, and since we're working in uh, increments of uh, nickels, that's gonna be 40 cents, okay? So to get 40 cents, I'm gonna go ahead and hit one quarter, one dime, and then one nickel. And then therefore we have in the memory held 40 cents, okay? And you can see by this comparator, we have an uh, equivalent sign here uh, going and sh uh, showing us that we uh, have achieved 40 cents. So if I go ahead and hit uh, product return, uh, we can see that we will get a product. And it happens so fast that uh, it probably didn't catch it. I noticed that anytime I screen record, it just doesn't pick up very well. So, um, but believe me, I've done this uh, quite a few times and I got to see the little blip of light. Um, so, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and show one more uh, instance where we go over uh, 40 cents. So let's go ahead, go ahead again, hit, uh, that was uh, 45 cents there, I believe. And you can see that we are greater than the price. All right, so then if I hit return for the product, we have five cents left over as, uh, being telling us by the state memory here. So I can hit coin return and get that money back. And that is the vending machine. So I'm gonna go ahead and answer some questions about this now. Um, so when designing this, uh, what tools were in our tool belt? Well, of course, in our uh, old vending machine projects, uh, we uh, created next state logic tables um, using whatever flip-flops we were using, creating Carnot maps. But um, for this here, we, simplified uh, tremendously because we decided to use, you know, uh, adders here, uh, subtraction here, uh, multiplexers, uh, a comparator. So that really helped uh, really just alleviate a lot of the process that it would uh, have taken to build a vending machine. Okay. So then the general finite state machine model has five components. Uh, so yeah, so we have our inputs, of course, here, which is our uh, currency that we're putting in, as well as the coin return and the price and the return of the product. And then uh, for our output, we have this little LED here. Uh, then for our uh, next state logic, let's actually talk about state memory. State memory is first here as we update our uh, coins that we put in, it uh, results here, right? And uh, if we were to add another coin, it will uh, remember our state memory send it to the next state logic, it's held there, and adds the uh, next coin that we add, which then updates the state memory for us. And up until the point till we get to uh, the correct price or above, then the output logic here at this comparator gets updated as being equal to or greater than, which allows us to go to this AND gate and get uh, our product. So. Is this a Mealy or a more machine? This is, I believe, a more machine. And that reason being is because we are not really relying on any other inputs other than uh, just what our state memory is at and what our next state memory will be based upon this next state logic. So we're not really replying, uh, relying on like an X factor or an X variable that will, um, you know, what will happen if we insert a nickel and we get have x equal to zero, or what if we insert a nickel and have x equal to one? Uh, so um, that would be the case for a Mealy machine, but uh, for a more machine, we're not really reliant on the inputs. So uh, what is the maximum money total for this uh, whole device we have here? Uh, because we're working with four bits, uh, we can only have a maximum of uh, 15, which uh, 15 times 5 cents is 75 cents. So as you can see, we, I could set my price here to hexadecimal F, which is in binary 1111, all the uh, bits equal to one, which is our max. And I can insert three quarters here, one, two, and three, and we have our equal sign here, 1111, that is our max. If I go one more over, we reset back to zero. So we gotta be careful of that, so. Cool. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and put, show that 
just one more time. I'm gonna put 65 cents into the machine, set it to 75, add one more. So here is F. All right, so 25, 50, uh, 55, 65 cents, right? This works. Uh, we are still currently less than the price, but if I go one more, we will go overboard and we are still less than. So we won't get any products, sadly. As you can see through this AND gate, we are not getting the output logic we need. Okay, so if pennies were accepted in this machine, how would that change the design? Well, first of all, that would uh, change how many inputs we have here. We're going to have another uh, input here. Uh, but that's also going to have to change uh, what we rate these values. Right now we have nickel. If I go ahead, turn that on. We have that set to 001. And if I increase it again, it becomes 0010. Well, that would have to be uh, the logic for a penny now. And then and then a dot, uh, the nickel would be the logic for 0010. And the dime would be the logic for the quarter, which when you turn on is 101. And it would... Uh, have to have a whole new set of logic values for that. So it would complicate a little things, uh, but um, shouldn't be too, too difficult. Okay. Um, so the machine might have incorrect values stored in the register. What uh, instructions should be given to the vending machine manager after plugging in the machine to ensure that the products are not sold for less than whatever set price they have? Uh, well, of course, whatever price you have set, say uh, the memory is always remembering seven, and it's gonna hold that value. Uh, just hit the coin return button a couple times and then we'll reset everything. Okay, so uh, in our circuit, we have these uh, delay devices here and all these are is just not gates, just stacked in series with one another. Uh, we have 12 of them here. And uh, the reason why we're using this is so that uh, we could hopefully uh, or realistically send our uh, coins through our machine, go through the adder and update the state memory uh, or really just uh, perform the addition first before we update the uh, state memory. So that's gonna send the, its input to the clock to cycle the register. So we wanna make sure that the addition is completely performed first before we uh, clock the state memory. So that's why we have these buffers here. So what is the issue with connecting a high frequency clock to the register input? Well, say if we had a, a very, very fast clock here and I went to insert one nickel, I would take it sometimes, you know, insert the nickel and then have it pass through and then turn it off. And if we had the uh, clock cycle more than one time, we would read multiple uh, nickel uh, nickels being inserted into the machine. So uh, in that case, if that were to happen, you know, maybe someone would only need to insert one nickel and somehow get 75 cents, depending how fast the clock is counting. And then they just, you know, skimp you 70 cents. So that's why you want to be careful of having too high frequency of a clock. So um, what is the purpose of the delay device? As I said, to uh, update the uh, uh, addition first before we uh, change the register. And then um, what does an OR gate feed into? Why does an OR gate feed into it? Uh, this OR gate feeds into this de delay device because we want to make sure that no matter what uh, coin we're inserting or uh, selecting the product, we can uh, make sure that all those signals are updating the state memory, which uh, of course obviously needs to update. So, so final question here, uh, why do we call this a vending machine controller? So if you see uh, kind of this whole section here of this uh, machine, um, well, it's kind of a control unit. So uh, we have our ALU here. We have our uh, addition and subtraction helping us with our logic and advancing to our, uh, through our throughout our steps, right? Uh, we have registers, which is, you know, storing our memory and kind of keeping uh, track of what state we are in, uh, which uh, is important for CPUs. And uh, we also have this delay up here, which kind of resembles like a buffer in a sense. So this is kind of like a control unit here. So, um, you know, what kind of engineer would work on uh, these components, these control units? Uh, obviously computer engineers. So, yep, that's all the questions I have here. Uh, hopefully I answered them. Uh, thank you for watching.